second I hand over for the revelation part to Michael. Maybe you can tell the audience what's underneath this cover. Porsche's recent entrance into the all-electric market was very spectacular, as their Porsche Taycan is one of the most gorgeous-looking EVs currently on offer. Therefore, it came as a surprise that Porsche, a brand known for their extremely desirable performance vehicles of all companies, would actually produce an all-electric minivan that doesn't even fit the Porsche signature design. You heard that right. Porsche is literally making a delivery vehicle. And today, we'll look at the real reasons behind Porsche's decision to make this van. Porsche has always been considered the flagship sports car brand. Its Porsche 911 has been the absolute benchmark of sporty driver's vehicles since the 60s, and it's still one of the most universally loved models in existence. Also, Porsche was the first sports car brand that made an SUV back in the early 2000s with the Porsche Cayenne. And even though feelings towards it were mixed back then, it was actually a leader of its segment. And many other extremely expensive brands like Bentley, Rolls-Royce, Lamborghini, and most recently, Ferrari, with its Ferrari Puro Sangue, actually only followed in Porsche's footsteps. Oh, and the Taycan, while not as revolutionary as the 911, remains a benchmark for all electric luxurious sports sedans. We can therefore wholeheartedly say that, even though their production numbers aren't really all that astonishing, primarily due to the fact that Porsches are high-end luxury vehicles, Porsche still managed to be innovative over the years while still retaining its status of a sporty car maker. So, it came as a huge surprise that Porsche of all the brands would actually resort to making a pathetic little minivan. I mean, what's the point of actually making a vehicle for a segment that is dying to the whole SUV crossover craze? And to add insult to injury, they've actually went out of their way and they've made a fully electric minivan, while the 911, Boxster, Cayman, and Cayenne still don't have an all-electric counterpart. This whole ordeal doesn't make a slight bit of sense at first glance. However, Porsche had a reason, and a good one if I might add, on why they've actually decided to fully develop an EV people carrier that can be found in abundance these days, instead of making a proper 911-esque sports car EV that could dominate the market. So, why did Porsche decide to make a minivan? Well, the minivan in question is actually called Porsche Vision Rendienst. The minivan is actually an updated take on the vintage Volkswagen Type 1 race service van that toiled for the Porsche race team in the 1950s. Rendienst means race service. We all know that Porsche has a very vibrant history in the world of racing, and improving its overall image and presence could only do good to the brand in the long run. So, even though it's a minivan, it's a minivan that actively participates in race events as a race service vehicle. And having a specific vehicle exclusively for that oozes of prestige and overall attention to detail on a whole new level. Now, to get a bit more specific with the van itself, the overall vehicle is currently just a tech show-off, as its interior is extremely revolutionary, and it could actually bring the whole minivan segment back into the spotlight. Porsche design chief, Mikhail Maurer, head of interior design, Marcus Auerbach, and Ivo Van Holten, director of user experience design, collaborated on imaging what the minivan driver of the future will need. This being Porsche, naturally this minivan driver still enjoys a romp on some twisty B-roads. So the captain's quarters is a single seat in the middle of the cockpit. I mean, even though it's a race service vehicle, it's still expected to be able to accelerate decently and be able to take corners with certain doses of aggression. And the seat will do a great job at helping out the driver while he carries out his obligations on the road. Two ergonomic bucket seats flank the driver's seat from the behind, giving those occupants unobstructed views out the windshield and views of two retractable screens hanging just below the instrument panel, assuming the occupants have raptor-like vision. In the back, a bench seat spans the width of the minivan, curving at the edges along the wall. There doesn't look to be much room between the back bench and the rear hatch, so the six-seat cabin is probably still best for race services, like getting team drivers and VIPs from the hotel to the track. That captain's chair in the front can rotate 180 degrees to face the rest of the occupants, perfect for a trackside confab in a private mobile office. Porsche also seems like they're not done with the Rendius minivan as they recently updated the design of the car as both the headlights and the doors have been changed compared to the original design. Also, the Rendius is still scheduled to be regularly updated, both styling-wise and mechanically-wise, and there are no reasons to believe that Porsche will actually abandon this project. Oh, and let's not forget about the fact that this is one of Porsche's rare all-electric projects, which means that it goes without saying that it's actually extremely advanced when it comes down to the overall driving experience, even though it's still just a minivan. 
So, does this mean that Porsche will actually start producing minivans in the future? Thankfully, Porsche is not planning on producing minivans anytime soon. The Rendiance is actually currently just a render, and it's probably going to be either a one-off or extremely limited edition vehicle that will be used exclusively as a race service vehicle. Porsche told Autoblog at the time the company is all about sports cars, so the minivan concept is not our plan at all. Nevertheless, of all the concepts in the book, Porsche decided to dedicate three of its finest design minds to creating the interior of the future for this one. This interior could be just a show-off, or it could possibly find its way into other car brands that are owned by the automotive giant that is Volkswagen, just like Porsche is. In fact, this actually wouldn't be a stretch, as the first Volkswagen vehicle, the original Volkswagen Beetle, was actually designed by Ferdinand Porsche, the founder of Porsche. Also, apart from that, Volkswagen has also borrowed numerous designs and solutions from Porsche over the years. As their first SUV, the Volkswagen Touareg was based on the original Cayenne, so it really wouldn't be a stretch if we started seeing minivans made by Seat, Skoda, Volkswagen, and even Audi that use this, this seating solution, as it is really cool. I mean, even the ever-loved Volkswagen Corrado from the late 1980s was initially planned to be an entry-level Porsche. However, it was soon tweaked so that it would replace the old Volkswagen Sirocco that was by the end of production. However, we are thankful that the company won't actually start making vehicles for soccer moms and non-car guys in the same manner that Ford did with the Ford Mustang Mach-E. As Porsche needs to maintain its almost century-old tradition and namesake, and we highly doubt that Porsche will start making minivans anytime soon, if ever. But on the other hand, Porsche is known to actually revolutionize segments, and making a minivan could actually be venerable for the company. In fact, Toyota has been doing the same thing recently, using its well-established status to actually revolutionize the whole market while still keeping its cars popular. And that is exactly what is happening with their new hydrogen internal combustion engine that is actually going to mark a completely new era for the car industry. And if you're interested in learning more, be sure to click on the link that is currently on your screen. I mean, Porsche is an extremely prestigious car brand. They've actually turned a utility vehicle into a luxurious one already. So it wouldn't really be a stretch to believe that they could make an expensive, sporty family people carrier. However, we really doubt this as there's no logic behind a service vehicle since SUVs already exist and they actually do the whole family sport vehicle thing rather well, much better than a minivan could. What we do believe is that this whole design, especially the interior, might be found in the upcoming VW models, since they in fact still sell MPVs and minivans. And they don't show any signs of stopping anytime soon.